Okay, so this is our very brief review of exponential and logarithmic functions. And then we're also going to do a brief review of solving exponential and logarithmic equations. So in part one, we're going to begin by looking at the definition of what an exponential function is. Um, so all exponential functions can be written in this form of y equals to a, where a can't be equal to zero because if a was equal to zero, well, you would just end up with y equals to zero, um, times b raised to the x power. So x is our input variable, right, our independent variable, and y is our dependent variable. So the, the variable is in the exponent position. And then there's some more restrictions on what the base b is, like uh, b needs to be strictly greater than 1, or b needs to be between 0 and 1. Uh, we refer to, I think I already referred to it as this, but b is called the base, um, where b is a, a real number that has the above restrictions, and we'll talk about why we have to have those restrictions in just a second. So a can also be thought of as the vertical stretch or shrink factor, but it can also be thought of as the initial value because uh, when we're talking about exponential growth or decay, uh, when x is equal to zero, right, that would be b raised to the zeroth power, um, which any real number is with uh, the restrictions, right, because b can't be equal to zero, raised to the zeroth power will just be 1, and then 1 times whatever a is, is a. So we think of it a as being the initial value. It also ends up being the y-intercept to the graph. Um, now, why do we have these restrictions on the base b? Well, let's consider what would happen if b were equal to 1, less than 0, or equal to 0. So if our base were equal to 1, right, that would be 1 raised to the x power. And we think about plugging in real numbers. Well, 1 raised to any real number of power would just be 1. So that would actually just represent a horizontal line. And b cannot be negative, so like let's say, let's think of b as being like negative 2. So negative 2 raised to the x power, well, if we plug in 1, well, negative 2 to the first power is, is, is negative 2. Uh, if we plug in 2 for x, negative 2 squared would be 4. If we plug in 3 for x, negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. So what happens is that the values end up oscillating between, for y, end up oscillating between positive and negative values. So the base cannot be negative because of that oscillation. And then if the base were equal to 0, right, 0 to the x power, well, if x were negative, right, if you were to plug any negative value in for x, it would be undefined, right, because that would be moving the 0 to the denominator. So we can actually make kind of a piecewise function here where the function would be undefined, if x is less than or equal to 0, right, because 0 to the 0th power is also undefined, and it would just be 0. y would be equal to 0 if x were strictly greater than 0. So it would be a horizontal line when x is strictly greater than 0. So we have those restrictions. The base b must be strictly greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. Now, exponential functions model exponential growth or decay for us, depending on what the base is. Now, lay people tend to claim that anything that grows quickly exhibits, exhibits emotion, no, not emotion, exponential growth, they can't talk. 
This, of course, is not always the case. And you guys know from your, because you have studied pre-calc and pre-calc um, exponential functions, that not everything exhibits exponential growth. Just because something grows, um, gets really large does not mean it, it represents exponential growth. Um, can exhibit linear growth, right? Um, there's a lot of other functions that can model growth. So let's think about this scenario to, as an example um, for exponential growth. Miss Dorset's nephew Jonas has saved up his money and ha now has $100 that he has decided to deposit into a savings account instead of storing it in his dresser drawer. This is a very smart decision on Jonas's part, but why? What's the difference between storing his money in his dresser versus save a savings account at a bank? Well, if we put that $100 in his dresser and, and leaves it, doesn't do anything, and, we, and he goes back a year later and opens up the drawer, there is only going to be $100 there still, which is, is good, right? It's nice to find, find money after two years. There would still be $100 there. After three years, still $100, unless he's adding money to it, which is, is not what's described in this situation. Now, if he puts his money in a savings account, that savings account is going to earn interest, right? That's, that's an incentive that the banks give you for you to put your money into the bank is they will pay interest. It's a, usually, a, especially with just a regular savings account, super small percentage, but every year or every or month, right? Like you could think about this small percentage, depending on what the terms are of the savings account, being added to that $100. Well, initially the $100. And then after, like, let's say that it's increasing five, just for simplicity, 5% pays 5% interest each year. So after a year, there would be $105, right? 5% of $100, $5. Um, so there would be $105. And then after another year, you take 5% of whatever 105 is and add that to that, that amount. So as that amount is getting larger and larger and larger, and you're taking the same percentage each year, the money is going to start growing at a faster and faster rate, right? Like that's how... That's how like really rich people, like these billionaires, they they have their money in places that earn a lot of interest and, and their money just grows exponentially over time and it can make them a lot of money by, by them not really having to do anything, by it just sitting there. Um, now the intuitive definition of exponential growth or decay is whenever you have a quantity or an initial amount that increases or decreases um, by a common percentage per period. So in the example that I just gave you guys, that was an example of exponential growth where Jonas's money, when he put it in the savings account, was going to increase 5% annually. So 5% every year, right? A year would be what the period is. But the period could be like you could be given some sort of a percentage monthly um, or daily or biweekly, you know, and then that percentage would be applied each period. And I'm sure you guys could think of lots of other examples of quantities that grow or decay because there's decay as well, right? Where the initial amount would be decreasing exponentially. So a common percentage would be taken away each period. Um, I'm sure you guys could think of other examples. I know last year um, or at the beginning of the pandemic, we were talking about the number of COVID cases increasing exponentially. We talked a lot about the doubling time for COVID cases in certain areas of the world um, to kind of use as a predictor. Now, the good thing is that with like, wearing masks and social distancing, those rates were able to be slowed down. But at the very beginning, those numbers were increasing 
at an exponential rate. There are other quantities like we often talk about um, like bacteria increasing exponentially. For example, of uh, exponential decay could be like medication. Like if you take a medication, we have to talk about or like to determine the appropriate dosage for you. Um, your doctor will think of like the half-life of the medication. So they can figure out what the appropriate dosage dosing would be for you or like how often that you need to take a dose um, of a medication. Um, so I, and I'm sure you could think of many more. Now, exponential growth, a graph that exhibits exponential growth represents an exponential function would be increasing as you read it from left to right. I'm going to copy this. And would look something like this. It starts out kind of slow. It almost looks like a hockey stick. It starts out slow and then it starts increasing rapidly. And exponential decay would be the graph flipped over the y-axis. So it would be decreasing at a rapid rate and then start to slow down. So here's our example of exponential growth. And exponential decay. And both as long as there's been no sort of vertical shift would have um, an end behavior asymptote, a horizontal asymptote at y equals to zero. Okay, so natural base E. So the natural base E is a common base for exponential functions. Um, you see 2 and 10 also as common bases. Uh, but E, Euler's number, named after Leonard Euler, is referred to as the natural base. And I have the definition of E right here. So if we were to think about evaluating this, this this should remind you of something. Doesn't this look like a limit, right? If we think about evaluating that expression as n approaches infinity, right? So as n gets very large, um, then that limit is actually e, the, the value of e. Um, so as we keep plugging larger and larger values in for n, right? So as n approaches positive infinity, that value gets closer and closer to E. Now, E, the lowercase e, is the exact value, the exact representation of Euler's number. Uh, we usually approximate it at 2.718. So you should know 2.718 is an approximation of E. Um, I'm going to skip the graphs of E, you could plot, you could figure it out and plot points. Um, the second equation here, that negative x in the exponent position, that would represent a horizontal reflection. So it would actually represent um, exponential decay, whereas y equals e to the x, e to the x would represent um, exponential growth. Okay, so next we're going to look at a brief review of logarithmic functions. And I'm actually going to split this up. I'll make another video for logarithmic functions.